Okay, so here we are, finally talking about the night vision. It's been a long time coming. some night vision I have a m2021 housing it's pretty much a replica of a NVM 14 and it's just two lenses and an empty body to throw a tube into that's what we're gonna do you can find PBS 7 tubes anywhere on eBay pretty much eBay there's Facebook groups um, there's buy sell trade groups all over the internet uh, it's gonna take a little research but they're out there Supplies. So the supplies you're going to need for this build, obviously, the housing, the tube, I have the tube packed in here just to keep it safe, and the 3D printed, it's a lens adapter I guess, there will be a STL file in the description with this one, 22, this is just 20 gauge wire, I've seen people say 24, I've seen people say 22, and you're going to need a soldering iron and solder obviously this is some lens cleaning spray this is for electronics and just to keep the lenses inside and outside and on the tube as clean as possible it's a soldering jig just in case you gotta hold uh you gotta hold a wire and use three hands and this is a turkey baster i made sure it was nice and clean this is just for blowing air onto the lenses just to keep dust out of the equation lens cloth a fresh one, preferably. And just your screwdrivers and whatever uh, tools you need to open and close the housing. I think we're ready to get started. Look up uh, DJ Gunner something something. I'll have his video in the, in the description. But he has a, a really good tutorial on how to build this guy. It's honestly really simple. You buy a housing, you kind of do a little Dremel work, pop the tube in the housing, solder a couple wires, screw everything together. It's it's relatively simple. So we're gonna start off by disassembling the housing. That's pretty easy. It's really just unscrewing the lenses from either side. And then popping out the four screws that hold the circuit board on top. Uh, inside, like I said, is a Gen 3 PBS7 tube. I think it's a harder digital and then a bunch of numbers. I don't exactly know the designation. Uh, but you can get harder digital, you can get MX10-130 tubes. There's a couple other spec like this. So now that we have the housing disassembled, you can see the two fins in there that are going to have to be dremeled out so we can fit the tube in. But you can see a little bit of damage there. Uh, that's from the factory. Every single one I've seen has had the same damage in the same place, so I don't think it'll affect functionality very much, but it is something to note. So here I'm just using the sanding drum on my Dremel to melt those two fins out and make room for the two. So this is the space all cleared out. If you sit down and take your time, you could probably make it look a little cleaner than mine, but there's a really tight squeeze in there. Specifically, the PBS7 tubes are inverted, so you'll need an inverter piece that comes with the housing that fits about there. Now, while it comes with the housing, it doesn't come with this spacer. You're gonna have to get this 3D printed. This spacer holds the inverter piece so that when you look through the image, it's a right side up image. So now that it's time to solder, I got the tube covered up with a little bit of tape and paper towels just to keep it safe. So just take your time here. Just look up a couple tips on how to solder and it should be pretty easy. So 
So after soldering the wires onto the tube, you can go ahead and connect the other ends to the circuit board and it should look something like this. So final assembly is gonna be pretty simple. Uh, as you can see, I popped the tube in there off camera. Sorry about that. But all you're doing is screwing the circuit board back on top and then screwing both lenses on either side except adding our inverter now. So one thing to always remember is that while you're assembling is to keep everything as clean as possible. That's what your turkey baster is for, that's what the lens cloth and the lens solution is for, just to keep all the dust out of the unit. So you can see here I noticed a little bit of play in the inverter fitting in the spacer. So what I did is I took an O-ring and just slid it around the spacer and that got rid of all the play. Just gotta screw on the lenses and then it'll be ready to test out. All in all, I think I'm in a little less than 1300 bucks. This uh, this arm here is by Tier None. I think you can get them on eBay for you know 40 bucks, 20, 30 bucks, something like that. But it pivots. Like if I have this drop down here, I can flip it, and now I'm looking through my left eye. In comparison to a PBS 14, this is a little bit longer, a little bit heavier but for about half the price, in my opinion, it's worth it. One of the prerequisites you're gonna to need to get into something like this is you need some tinkering skills. You need a soldering iron, you need uh, you know, basic hand tools, and patience. You know, It's gonna take a little bit to get everything perfect and put together, and you really don't wanna break pieces on this because they're very expensive. I haven't put a ton of hours behind this tube in situations where I'm doing, you know, running around in the woods and all that kind of shit. I have taken this to one Milsim game. Uh, it was a Viking axe and it was only, you know, three or four hours of darkness and the game ended about midnight. So it wasn't the, the most practical situation to use this in, but I got to kind of feel out what it was, how it works and uh, kind of what night vision use is all about. Honestly, as far as having just something to move around at night with your team, something to see IR light with, and like a basic, as a basic entry into the night vision world, I don't think you can do any better than this. For less than $1,500, really less than 14, it gets you everything a, a Gen 3 PBS 15 would. And a PBS 15, sorry, PBS 14, will get you into pretty much every night event or, or shooting, or range day or anything like that. So in my opinion, it's a good build. A lot of people will tell you to just buy a PBS-7 and a PBS-7 housing just because mil spec, it's gonna be more durable, more reliable. I can't argue with that, but the biocular vision is really a problem. Honestly, it's, it's almost impossible to get behind the sights of your gun or anything like that. You know, everybody's kind of moved on to monocles for a reason or monoculars. I find it pretty easy to get behind my knot or behind my red dot personally. I have a pretty high up red dot though. Like right here, I can see just fine. I can see my dot perfectly. So passive aiming is definitely possible if your optic setup is uh, designed around it. I have a... Uh, a replica Wilcox 
that you know they're all over eBay for a hundred something bucks and you know there's a little bit of play in it you know obviously some, some wobble there but some bungee retention and a little bit of tightening screws can get rid of most of that play it took a, a good amount of time to build and to procure all the, all the parts but if you're into building stuff and I'm that guy I like building things uh, and maybe you have a 3D printer, or you know somebody who has one, or you can simply order a 3D print online pretty easily. Um, then this build is definitely a way to go if you're trying to get into the night vision world. One thing to keep in mind when you're moving through doors and something like that, uh, this is sitting pretty far outside of your face. It's about six inches away from your eye. So sometimes learning exactly where your proprioception should be, something that has to be trained like always. The lens is here. So what I have is a sacrificial lens. This is just on Amazon, just a 25 millimeter sacrificial lens. And it screws right into that um, front assembly. And so now, at least uh, if you're playing airsoft or something like that, and it shatters the glass, you won't have to go out and get a new lens. My lens cap is always popping off just because of the lens protector. You have your diopter, I think this is, and then your objective. These both rotate for focus. Your battery cap takes a CR123A battery. You have three different rail positions. Although if you use the tier none arm, it comes with its own little rail piece. See that right there? You'd have to pop those screws out, yank it off, throw on the one that comes with it, and then it fits. And then, front power right here. I marked it because it didn't have any marks. So pull out and twist that's on. I think that's IR. You can see the little red, a little purple there. And I don't know exactly what that function is, but you have a little IR map reader light there. Um, I've heard somebody nitrogen purged this. I don't exactly know how they did it. I think they used argon and a little spray can. Uh, I haven't tried it yet, but apparently it did hold its its purge, so should be waterproof. I haven't tested it. I don't really want to. I've spent enough money on this guy to not want to, you know, get it wet. But I imagine, you know, in some light rain, as long as you're not diving with it, should be fine. It's relatively rugged. Again, a lot cheaper than you're going to spend getting doing any sort of night vision off of a retailer or something like that so other than that if you guys have questions about this or about any other gear about anything else on my channel always hit me in the comments as far as my opinion goes this is the best option to get into night vision practically and on a budget so i'm gonna call it that's the video thank you guys for sticking around and we'll catch you in the next one